Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants, and today we're going to talk about summer dormancy and you. So, summer dormancy is a very rare topic that most people never usually get to deal with. So, species that typically would experience some summer dormancy, oh, this is a better one to show you, Pilar sundews, and uh, rainbow plants, so Biblis. These species grow in the northern areas of Australia that they receive a like weird uh, flip-flop of seasons comparatively to what we would think. So during the winter months, they are all wet. And then during the summer months, they are entirely dry. Kind of a flip-flop from over here in the northern hemisphere where, you know, it tends to be rather dry during the winter and then very wet during the summer. So it's just the, it has to do with a lot of geographical factors and whatnot, but the monsoon seasons uh, are what bring rains to the northern part of Australia. And during that season is whenever you'll find most of the carnivorous plants are active and growing. Once the monsoons wind down, you then find this drying period where like rainfall just plummets off the cliff and then the heat starts ramping up. After uh, about a month of this, most of the carnivorous plants in northwestern Australia have undergone what is known as summer dormancy. This is an incredibly rare phenomenon to experience in cultivation and usually is a sign that your tropical setup is too variable for these plants. Summer dormancy can be triggered by heat that's over 95 degrees uh, pretty consistently, lower humidity, uh, longer light cycles, or any combination of the three. So if you have extremely high temperatures, you've raised your light cycle, and your humidity is the same, still can trigger summer dormancy. Humidity, uh, everything else is the same. Humidity just changes, can trigger summer dormancy. Just your lighting changes, but your temperatures and your humidity stay the same can trigger summer dormancy. All of these different factors can and potentially will trigger summer dormancy in your plant. It's kind of a crapshoot and each one of the plants is very weird because like, so for example, like my Pedialaris sundews, my Drosser Pedialaris in particular, I have two trays of it sitting right here. Whenever that thing goes dormant in the summer randomly, it's kind of perplexing to me because these are all clones of the same plant and on how radically each one of them will uh, handle the different conditions. And some of them will just, oh, no, I'm going dormant right now. Some of them, oh, no, I can take another 10, 15 degrees of heat. I don't know why. I wish I could tell you with some kind of sense of certainty what's going on, but no, I can't. I have witnessed, however, some very unusual things in horticulture when it relates to summer dormancy, particularly with Biblis. So Biblis are the ones to most commonly experience uh, summer dormancy with some sense of regularity. And most people, oh, I got a little kitten that came to say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Spook. <laughs> Ain't she a pretty kitty? Mwah. She was lurking about during my shooting, so I had to show her. So Biblis, back to Biblis, I'm summer dormancy, sorry. Uh, Biblis are the ones that I'll typically uh, see summer dormancy in the most. And these one, it'll be exemplified by the plant will be browning from the top down. Now, a big thing on this though, is that fusarium outbreaks will generally start bottom up. So summer dormancy is very pronounced in that it'll be from top down, though you can have fusarium outbreaks that will cause the plant to start wilting from the top, but trust me, the summer dormancy wilt does not look like the plant has like gotten all nasty and wiry and like shriveled up and died. Instead, it's much more woody and thick, so like it still retains much more of the original shape of the plant, so it won't like just curl over when I will still actually be standing upright as a biblis. And this process uh, I've witnessed in even the annual species, they'll wooden off. And once they get that wood, uh, if 
conditions stay good enough for long enough, they will then eventually break the dormancy, and from that woody tissue, new meristemal tissue, well, meristomal tissue, so like new growth shoots, well, shoots, will start forming, and it'll grow off. This process is very understudied. It is very underdocumented. In horticulture, very few people actually get the plants to cycle through the dormancy cycle, like especially with the PD layers. Like it's very common for people to get them to go dormant, very hard for them to get out of dormancy on a regular basis. And that's where you'll generally see people be like, oh yeah, I keep my PD layers and I make them go dormant. And then you'll realize that, oh, this person hasn't posted about their PD layers sundews in over 10 years. Yeah, almost like if you let them go dormant, there was something wrong with your conditions. And that's basically the ultimate point here is that if you're experiencing summer dormancy and you're not in the American Southwest where it's hot enough to actually regularly achieve summer dormancy, it typically means that one of your factors in your grow setup is not like to the liking of that plant. And mind you, we're only talking about two different uh, very small narrow s sections of plants in that you got rainbow plants, which is there's the whole genus of Biblis, and then also uh, the Pedialaria sundews. And it's only because of the unique environment that they in inhabit that they have to deal with this situation at all. Now, I've made this video predominantly because there is very little information about summer dormancy present online, and I want it to actually spread some of what I know. I hope that uh, this video reaches some other people and inspires more information and more personal experiences to come out, and hopefully it will inspire some, you know, botanist who's looking for a good paper to write to go up to the Northwest Territories of uh, Australia and go, go look and find something, you know, go, go see what's actually going on with the summer dormancy, see what actually is triggering it. Is it the water availability? Is it the heat? Is it the humidity? I'd actually be very curious to see a study about uh, the conditions that trigger them. Thank you so much for watching this. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. The algorithm uh, likes all of those things and it helps my channel immensely. Please join the Discord if you want to interact with me directly. I do plant talks every Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then come buy a plant for me directly at my store, johnscarnivorousplants.com. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.